we're kicking off with the Royal Rumble, as the Men's Rumble match was CM Punk's first televised match for WWE in a decade, and he'd be the final man thrown over the top rope. Punk performed well in the match and showed little to no ring rust, but there are now concerns that he may have suffered an injury. Some eagle-eyed fans noticed that Punk landed awkwardly on his right elbow after taking a Future Shock DDT from Drew McIntyre and quickly crawled to the corner. Multiple referees were speaking to him, and Jessica Carr had a concerned look on her face, but Punk was able to finish the match and make it to the final two as planned. Following his elimination, Punk was seen clutching his right elbow again, and we can only hope that the former WWE and AEW World Champion doesn't have to miss any time. An injury is the last thing WWE needs for Punk right now, especially with Seth Rollins currently out of action, and we'll continue to monitor this situation for further updates. The men's Royal Rumble match ended with Cody Rhodes, the number 15 entrant, standing tall, becoming only the fourth man in history to win back-to-back -back Rumble matches. Cody Rhodes won a guaranteed World Championship match at WrestleMania, but he also lost a tooth during the 30-man contest. It's not exactly clear how Cody lost the tooth, though many believe a Claymore kick by Drew McIntyre was responsible for this unplanned dental work. Even without his tooth, Cody won the match by last eliminating CM Punk and shared a tribute to the Elite in his post-match celebration. Cody used the signature gestures of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, namely the Too Sweet and Omega's gun gesture post-match, in a nice nod to his friends and ex-colleagues. Of course, this isn't Cody's first time winning a Rumble, as he did so last year, but was unable to dethrone Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39 in SoFi Stadium. Grabbing the mic after the Rumble went off the air, Cody offered an apology for not finishing his story last year and expressed his gratitude to the Tampa Bay area. Cody dubbed the area that the Rumble was hosted in Cody territory and said it was once his father's territory and assured fans things would be different at WrestleMania 40. After thanking the fans and sharing his love, Cody made his way to the back and celebrated on the runway to the backstage with his friend, WWE Hall of Famer, Diamond Dallas Page. It was a wholesome interaction as DDP was clearly proud of the American Nightmare and both would be emotional during the post-show press conference. Speaking of the press conference, Cody fielded a lot of questions during his appearance and was asked about the man he eliminated to win the match, CM Punk. When asked about not facing Punk in AEW, Cody had the following to say. It's funny that we meet back here. When we were at AEW, I thought we would encounter one another there, and it didn't happen. For whatever reason, it didn't happen, but I think both him and I had different personal experiences. Punk and Cody may have been two of AEW's top stars, but they're both now in WWE. And for Cody Rhodes, his WWE future is focused on WrestleMania 40 and Roman Reigns. Shortly before this year's Royal Rumble, it was reported that Brock Lesnar had been pulled from the match due to his connection to the ongoing Vince McMahon scandal. Despite Brock's absence, the Men's Royal Rumble had 30 entrants just as planned, and who did WWE select to fill the very big shoes of the Beast Incarnate? As revealed by Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, Braun Breaker wasn't initially on the Royal Rumble roster and was a last-minute call for the match. Meltzer said that since Brock was going to have a long, dominant run in the Rumble, WWE needed someone to look impressive, hence why the NXT powerhouse was chosen. The situation was very good for Breaker, but has raised questions about Lesnar's future, as it may be a while before the former Universal Champion is on TV once again. John Pollock of Post Wrestling reports that WWE had plans for Lesnar to work with Dominic Mysterio at the Elimination Chamber event, but it's unclear if he'll be heading to Perth now. As much as fans would love to see Dominic be destroyed by Brock, WWE clearly doesn't want fans thinking about the lawsuit, which claims Janelle Grant was trafficked to Lesnar. It remains to be seen what happens with Lesnar, but what do you think of this situation? Let us know in the comments down below. The 7th Annual Women's Royal Rumble opened this past weekend's event and saw Bayley not only win, but break the record for the longest run in a single Women's Rumble. The role model lasted for over an hour and three minutes before last eliminating Liv Morgan to win, which is in fact longer than WWE had planned to give the match itself. Fightful Select is now reporting that the Women's Royal Rumble match was listed internally for 55 minutes, but ended up going on for 65 minutes before Bayley's win. This makes the match the second longest women's match in WWE history, only behind the 2019 Rumble won by Becky Lynch that went 72 minutes. With this win, Bayley has punched her ticket to WrestleMania 40 where she can choose a champion, but all of the women prove their value in this lengthy match. 
One of the biggest spots of the night saw Jade Cargill make her WWE debut and she immediately started strong by eliminating Nia Jax single-handedly. Cargill made it to the final three in the match before being eliminated by Liv Morgan, but despite strong booking, things didn't go exactly how WWE had hoped. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said that she was very much AEW's Jade Cargill and is not at the level of pretty much any female WWE superstar. Meltzer added that she was very messy and needs to get on the road, and Brian Alvarez added that she's been having a hard time remembering a lot of stuff for her matches. Alvarez agreed that Jade should be on the road and doing matches with veteran WWE women, especially if WWE wants her to be ready for a high-profile WrestleMania match. There are high expectations for Jade Cargill in WWE, and while she was booked strong last weekend, it's now up to her to prove she can hang with the top women in the company. Now, Braun Breaker had quite the showing in the men's Rumble match, as he eliminated more men per second than anybody else, if you don't count Pat McAfee's self-elimination. Braun eliminated four men during his 5-minute, 19-second run, meaning he scored an elimination every minute and 20 seconds, and fans can expect more of him on TV. In a post-match interview, Breaker said he felt grateful for the opportunity, and since he was eliminated by Dominic Mysterio, added that he's not done with the Judgment Day. In a massive claim, Breaker said that the main roster is my home now, seemingly signifying that his days in NXT will come to an end very soon. Breaker is currently part of the men's Dusty Classic in which he is teaming with Baron Corbin, and after that wraps up, it may be the last we see of Braun in NXT. Since his debut in 2021, WWE has had plans to move Breaker to the main roster, and now it looks like that's finally happening for the second generation superstar. With Cody Rhodes' victory, it's practically guaranteed that he'll face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40, which means that Reigns' match with The Rock isn't happening yet. Since the day one edition of Raw, fans had speculated that it'd be Rock versus Reigns this April, and while that may not be the plan, that doesn't mean the match will never happen. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that the much-anticipated match is still happening, but it's just unclear where and when the two relations will lock horns. Despite this, Meltzer reiterated that the match is on, and with two nights of WrestleMania, we can't rule out Roman facing Cody on one night and his cousin on the other. At 51 years old, The Rock's window of opportunity to face Reigns is closing, and when do you think we'll see the two icons of WWE finally go face-to-face -face in the ring? At the Royal Rumble, Roman Reigns' dominant run as the undisputed WWE Universal Champion continued as he dispatched of L.A. Knight, Randy Orton, and AJ Styles. Reigns has thrived as a heel but recently broke character, as in a backstage area at the Rumble, Reigns walked with a child from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. WWE and Make-A-Wish have worked together for years, making dreams come true for young people facing awful situations, which Reigns did last week at the Royal Rumble. With the Royal Rumble in the rearview mirror, all attention now turns towards Elimination Chamber Perth, which will be Australia's first premium live event since 2018. Women's World Champion and Australia's own Rhea Ripley will almost certainly be on the card, and we may have an idea as to who she'll face in her homeland. On Wrestling Observer Radio, it was said that Nia Jax is the most likely challenger for Ripley, especially as Jax defeated Becky Lynch on the Day 1 edition of Raw. A match between the two has yet to be announced, but no matter who she faces, Ripley will no doubt get a thunderous response from her fellow Aussies next month. In the run-up to the Royal Rumble, there was a lot of talk about the lawsuit against Vince McMahon, which alleges some vile acts reportedly committed by the former chairman. Despite suspicion that WWE would nix a press conference, the company went ahead with one and even allowed questions relating to the lawsuit against McMahon. On that press conference, Cody Rhodes was asked about the allegations against McMahon in WWE and whether talent were informed before the news broke. He said, I know as far as the news was concerned, we were finding it out and reading the same thing that you guys were reading. When you said a dark cloud, certainly. Clearly TKO, Nick Khan, and the board took it seriously. As far as the future, I don't know the answer to that, and I think somewhere there really is a basic tenet that this group, from more than ever, from a roster standpoint, it's a family. Most of the time, locker rooms are fighting, talking trash about each other and other nonsense. This crew is team-based, and perhaps that is the ingredient. It's everyone looking out for everyone and being accountable. I know for me, I've been through dark periods in the industry before. Later on, Triple H was questioned about measures taken to ensure the safety of employees and to address concerns about potential exploitation. He said, I'll give you the most generalized answer I can. Everything possible. That is a very important thing to us, a very important topic to us. It's as simple as everything possible. 
The game was also asked about whether he's read the suit and made clear that he hadn't. I did not. I did not. Cody mentioned it. We all found out real time when you were. That's the truth. I'll go back to what I said before. It's an amazing week for us. I don't even want to get bogged down in the negatives of it. I just want to focus on the positives and where we're going. We're at the most exciting time of the year for us and the most exciting point to me business-wise that we've ever had. McMahon may be gone from WWE, but this lawsuit isn't going away, and expect WWE to be under massive scrutiny going forward, even without the ex-chairman around. The men's Rumble match didn't have as many surprises as the women's, but it did feature the return of Andrade mere weeks after his exit from AEW was confirmed. Andrade was the number 8 entrant and lasted 23 minutes before being eliminated by Bronson Reed, and while he didn't win, he's thrilled to be back with the company. While speaking during a backstage interview, Andrade was asked his feelings after returning to WWE and said, How do I feel? Happy. I'm happy to be here, be back. I needed to leave to remember who I was, but now I'm back and I know who he is. But remember, now nobody is stopping me. The fans were excited to see Andrade back, but nobody would have been more excited than his wife, Charlotte Flair, who made sure her man looked ready for the match. In backstage footage, Flair, wearing a protective walking boot, helped Andrade apply Tanner to his back ahead of his return in what is the definition of wrestling couple goals. Charlotte's injury kept her from the Women's Rumble, but she was pleased to help Andrade, and perhaps we'll see the pair unite on TV once the Queen is fully healed. More from the Royal Rumble as Samantha Irvin didn't compete, but she did go the distance as the Raw announcer made the announcements for every match on the show. Fightful Select reports that the reason Irvin did this, announcing the SmackDown matches as well, was because Mike Rome lost his voice and WWE needed her to step up. There was also a spot during the Universal title match in which Solo Sokoa went flying through the barricade near Irvin, but she was said to be okay. Samantha Irvin has impressed many in WWE with her announcing skills, and we imagine that higher-ups will be pleased with her stepping up in St. Pete's last weekend. During a February 2021 episode of Raw, Nia Jax faced Lana in what would have been another routine match until a two-word exclamation from Jax would change everything. After landing on the hard ring apron, Jax screamed, My hole! Which, thanks to the lack of live fans, was picked up by the WWE microphones and instantly went viral. Nearly three years on, Jax's hole is still a meme among fans, and while speaking to Chris Van Vliet ahead of the Rumble, Nia recalled the reaction backstage at the time. She said, When I walked backstage after the match, everybody was laughing. I was like, okay. Then everybody was like, you're trending on the internet right now. Like, number one of my hole, and I was like, there's no way. It was a joke that I was playing. It was COVID times. It was just a different era. But yeah, that took on a whole other level. It was incredible. The funny thing is, I didn't realize that the cameras were going to pick it up that loud. I say a lot of things in the ring that don't get picked up. I'm cussing up a storm, and now it was like, clear as day, and I'm like, what? My mom's proud. My mom's so proud of me. During a previous virtual signing, Jack said that the line was done to get a laugh out of Triple H and Vince McMahon and Gorilla, and the line going viral was just a happy accident. A lot's happened since Jax's hole got introduced to the ring apron the hard way, and now she's back in WWE. Hopefully, she has some soothing cream just in case it happens again. Last week, Dwayne Johnson was announced as a member on TKO's board of directors in a huge deal between two sides, which brings Johnson back into the world of wrestling. On the post-Royal Rumble press conference, Triple H discussed Johnson's arrival to TKO and what expertise the Brahma Bull can bring. He said, an amazing opportunity for us to have the biggest celebrity, the biggest star in the world, and the biggest box office attraction in the world to be a part of that board and help us. He's an expert on branding, on marketing, all those things, so to help with that. The game added that he and The Rock have their own unique way of business communication in regards to the WWE product, adding, But what I love about it is he's also a guy, while on a board at an extremely high level and communicate with them, I can have shorthand with him about what WWE needs. And for people that sometimes don't understand what the product is, that's such a blessing to be able to call him and just say, in our language, here's what I'm feeling, here's the way I want to go, and can you help me with that? And that's really what they're there for, to help us with that and business. Both men have wrestling embedded in their veins, and with the expertise of both, expect huge things in the coming months for WWE and TKO Group Holdings. As previously mentioned, Brock Lesnar was supposed to be a part of the 2024 Men's Rumble match, which would have kicked off the Beast Incarnate's road to WrestleMania. 
We all know why Lesnar wasn't in the match, and the Janelle Grant lawsuit could mean that Lesnar is also kept off the card for the two-night mega show this April. In an update for F4W Online, Dave Meltzer reports that the original plan had been for Lesnar to face Gunther at WrestleMania in a dream match fans had been dying to see. A showdown between the two was teased during the 2023 Men's Royal Rumble match, and while some believed it had happened at WrestleMania 39, that didn't transpire. It's worth mentioning that WWE has not confirmed that this match is or isn't happening, and there's still the chance WWE uses Brock at the show, despite the ongoing controversy. A lesser Gunther match would be physical to say the least, and give the Austrian perhaps his biggest challenge to date, but will it happen this April in Philly? Time will tell. The Royal Rumble was a huge way for WWE to kick off their 2024 premium live event schedule, and at the press conference, Triple H revealed that the show set an attendance record. With 48,044 fans packing Tropicana Field, WWE now holds the record in the St. Petersburg venue, a far cry from the zero live fans that made up the audience of the Thunderdome era. Throughout the Royal Rumble event, the WWE on TNT Sports Twitter account was sharing some of the excitement from the show, and one post caught a lot of attention. For those unaware, TNT Sports is WWE's broadcast partner in the UK, and one tweet had the message, there's only room for one con in this business. The post was shared alongside a photo of Nick Khan, who was watching the Logan Paul-Kevin Owens match, and many took it as a major shot at AEW's Tony Khan. The tweet has since been deleted, but not before it got screenshotted, and those at TNT may want to think twice the next time they tweet about the WWE president. And we're ending with the Royal Rumble, as the show featured some of WWE's top superstars on the card, but there were some notable names from wrestling's past backstage at the show. As Cody Rhodes mentioned during the press conference, he spotted Dory Funk Jr. and Steve Kern, aka Skinner, backstage, but they weren't the only legends around. PW Insider adds that Dory's wife Marty accompanied her husband for the show, and that Gerald Briscoe, Brian Blair of the Killer Bees, and Mike IRS Rotunda were also in attendance. These legends will have been thrilled to have seen Dusty's kid win the Men's Rumble and earn a shot at finishing the story his father never could at WrestleMania 40 this April.